What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Coach Rob back with another review. Now this review today is a subscriber's choice. As you can see, bond number nine, Wall Street. Now uh, one of my subscribers a couple weeks ago sent me a private message and um, asked me if I can do a review for her. You know, she was saying if you don't have the uh, fragrances that I would like to, you know, you do a review on, I'll send you a decan of them. And um, you know, she explained to me I'm one of her favorite reviewers and she, you know, she likes my take on fragrances, which I do appreciate. Um, and thanks for the support, Scion Girl. Uh, she sent me a nice sample of um, the Wall Street. She also sent me a sample of Zero Jobs 1861. I've had a sample of this in the past, so I'm kind of familiar with this one. I've never smelled Wall Street. And she also sent me, I don't know what size sample this is, but this is a pretty big sample of um, Cuba Wild Heart. Man, I can smell this through the bottle, man. This is pretty strong already. I didn't even take it out and I can smell it. So, look forward to a review on these two in the future. 1861 and Cuba Wild Heart. She asked me to do it, so I'm taking my time out and do it for her. You know, I like doing whatever my subscribers tell me to do. Um, also, you see, it says Hall. Um, this this past weekend, or past week, I, went, I just went to Vegas, and I went to Barney's and discovered a whole bunch of new fragrances. Shout out to my boy D. Greg. You know, he did that review on Morphine. And if you guys haven't seen that, I think it was X-Ray is the brand. Morphine is the name of the fragrance. A great fragrance. I put my nose on that. I didn't get a sample of it, but I put my nose on that. And um, he was right, man. That fragrance smells real good. But um, after I finish the review on Wall Street, I'm going to show you everything that I got over here, my little haul that I did. Um, then I'm going to do the traditional way how most reviewers do it. I'm going to let you guys know everything I got. You guys choose what review you would like me to um, do next. So, further ado, let's get into this bond number nine Wall Street review. Now, usually before I do a review on anything, I don't like to do any research on it. I don't like to watch uh, another reviewer's opinion on it. Because when you do that, or at least when I do that, sometimes that influences me to kind of take on the same vibe or the same you know opinion that they had of it and with this one it's funny because she told me she's like you know I know what it smells like but I like to hear what you you know what you think but then she was like um you know it's a great opening it starts off good but then it turns in it dries down on me to a wet dog and I'm like, you know, a wet dog, like, you know what I'm saying, who, who wants to smell like a wet dog? And I'm like, it couldn't be that bad. I mean, what cologne, you know, smells like a wet dog? So, you know, as soon as it came in the mail, I was in the car, I sprayed it on. I got that great opening she, she, she talked about. Then it kind of changed to something else. And then it, this changes four times on me. This, this, this fragrance is pretty complex. Out of anything I ever wore, I, I never had a fragrance that changed as much on me as this one does. And that note kicked in that she was talking about and soon as I smelled it I thought of her I was like wet dog I got that same wet dog vibe from this and later on I wore it like two days in a row um, I wore it when I was in Vegas in the daytime and that note what you know she she considers or she she links with a wet dog is actually something else and after I wore it a couple of times I really didn't get the wet dog vibe I think I think it was just in my head because she told me that's what it smells like to her so, but it kind of do smell like a wet dog. So, but anyway, to get into what this smells like, uh, when you first spray this on, at least on my skin, the first 30 minutes is great. It's a great uh, opening. It's, it's real green. Um, it has a freshness to it. It kind of smells like 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 freshly cut grass with with cucumber in it, like a fresh like a watery cucumber. You get that. You get that green from the, from the grass. Then you get that um that that fresh cucumber, and you get like a, a bitter orange, like a real sour orange vibe. So you get the green from the grass, the uh, what did I say? The green, the cucumber, and the uh, orange. So those are the first the first thirty minutes. They they blend real well. Smells real great. Nice citrus accord. And then like about 30, 31 minutes until about like an hour hour and a half, that grass opening turns to like dirt like so it starts at the grass and it goes into the soil so you get like a, a earthy like soil vibe you still have the orange the orange there and you have something else like a um it, it, this is this isn't in the notes you get like a rose petal so 
hour and a half, I mean 31 minutes or like over 30 minutes, so about an hour and a half. Um, just imagine if you had an orange, you cut the orange, you got some fresh dirt, some fresh soil, you smash that into the orange, you took some rose petals, and you smash that into the orange, and you smelt it. So you're getting that citrus from the orange, you're getting like a sweetness floral almost from those rose petals, and then you're getting like that real earth tone, that 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 vetiver, like a strong vetiver, earth, dirt vibe going on. And um, it may sound worse than how I'm describing it, but it's pretty good, you know, it's, it's not bad, you know what I mean? Um, for you guys that like vetiver, you guys like that that earth earth green stuff, earth tones or whatever, you, you'll definitely like that. Um, so, so now we're about, what, an hour and a half in. So from that point to about two and a half, two and a half hours, maybe two, it, it, it takes a dive. It, it goes in, it goes totally wrong direction on me. And that's where, you know, Cyan Girls, the wet dog vibe comes for her. Um, and actually, as I wore it a couple of days in a row, it's not really, obviously it's not a wet dog note, but it's a seaweed. Now, what happens is like it that that dirt that vetiver like that earthy dirty smell is still there then you combine that in with like an aquatic note that appears mixed with that seaweed note so you got that aquatic that dirty vetiver and that seaweed mix and that almost smells like a wet dog the aquatic is the wet per uh, uh, part the seaweed is is like the like the the, the the dirty and then the vetiver is the dog. So that's that's the wet dog. But um, but that doesn't last on my skin that long. It's thirty minutes to an hour max. So that that part that seaweed I didn't really you know for any of you guys that have been to a beach I'm sure you smell seaweed before. You know here in San Diego we don't have those clear you know blue waters of the Caribbean or nothing like that. We got like a murky green kind of dirty you know beach water and that's that vibe. It's a dirty seaweed beach aquatic vibe that you get it's kind of salty also that you get in that small portion i don't know that may last longer on others but um on me it, it was short-lived so it was it really wasn't a big deal um and you still have a, a hint of that citrus in the background so i mean the the orange or the citrus was kind of savory it wasn't extremely bad but i can see how at that point of this fragrance will turn a lot of people off from that it changed again fourth time now on me that it doesn't stay like that on, on Scion Girl. She told me that that's the dry down. So she get wet dog or seaweed from that point on. On me, on my skin, I get it for about an hour, and then that that um citrus picks back up. But now that citrus, I don't know what sweetens it up, but something sweetens that citrus up. It's not as bitter as it was in the opening in the mids. It kind of just goes from three, pretty much the whole like three to four hours. Man, this 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 has longevity. Like this is a this is a great longevity fragrance um it's not a projection monster um i had it on we was in vegas i was in vegas with my girlfriend and um she couldn't really smell it unless i lay down next to her or if i hugged her or something like that she couldn't really smell it. i had to always ask her can you smell it on me can you smell it on me and once she got close and sniffed she could smell it but um on my clothes this was there the next day so on your clothes you're getting a good 12 14 hours out of this wall street on your skin it's a close to the skin scent i would say you get about I still got about eight hours because I had it on my wrist. I kept smelling it, but it just wasn't really projecting. Um, the silage wasn't that great, um, but it did have good longevity. So pretty much this 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 Wall Street is a very complex uh, fragrance. But like I said, it changed a ton on me. But um, that's pretty much it. I think I made this sound like a bad fragrance because the wet dog analogy and the seaweed. It, it, it's, it's, it's good, though. It's, it's not it's not bad. Um, and I hope I didn't give you guys that impression that this is a bad fragrance because it's, it's a good fragrance. I, um, I really enjoyed it. It's just that one little, that seaweed note that kicked in that um, I wasn't vibing with that. And neither was Scion Girl, obviously, because she, she said it smelled like a wet dog. But um, if you're familiar with this, you know, let me know. Leave it in the comments. Um, what's your vibe on it? Uh, with, with, with this one, I don't know if this would be a purchase for me. This is definitely something different. This is a unique one. But with that price tag, how much these usually run, I don't know if I'll, I'll purchase that fragrance. You know, if it was around, uh, maybe if I could find it on fragrance.net around $100, $125, um, I'll probably purchase it. But for upwards of $200, $250, I'm not going to mess with Wall Street. But uh, Wall Street is a great, uh, great fragrance. You know, I think a lot of people would appreciate this. But um, anyway, that's my review on that. Uh, before I go, 
I want you guys, my subscribers out there, to let me know what you would like me to do next. Um, you already seen I have 1861 by Zerjoff. I had this Wild Heart by Cuba. Um, when I was in Vegas, like I said, I went to Barney's, and I fell in love with a oud fragrance. You know what I mean? I don't even like oud. I'm not a big wood fragrance type of dude. But um, most ouds that I smelled just wasn't my thing. I even smelled Kree's Royal Oud, and I didn't even like that one. And I love Kree stuff, but um, I, I wasn't vibing with it. But when I went out there, great clerk, man. He showed me all kind of stuff. He, he pretty much picked out um, all, of, all his favorites and everything he liked. I pretty much like we was on the same page. Um, there was this one Serge Luton's um, fragrance, man. He showed me, and I can't remember the name of. I think it was uh, Sepia or S E P I A Sepia, something like that. I could be wrong. I'm gonna look it up. I should have looked it up before this video, but that one was good. I haven't heard anybody talk about that one, so I might pick that one up. Um, but the ooh that I fell in love with. And you guys probably can't see this, so I ain't going to even try to show you. But Oud Immortal by Byredo, man. That Byredo line, um, I think I really like that one, man. I smelled probably four or five from there. Gypsy Water, Oud Immortal, um, Pope. That I, my girlfriend loves Pope. Um, that's like a straight fruit bowl. Um, there was a couple others, man, but I, I enjoyed a lot of those Byredo fragrances. So I got I to gotta really give me some more samples that I'm going to explore into those. Then I went into the Frederick Mall line. You know, in my last video, I talked about the perfumer. And you know the Frederick Mall house is all about the perfumer. So that's pretty much what I really dived into when I went there. And um, I, I fell in love with another one, man. It's called uh, Lue de Hiver. Yeah, I'll put the name right here because I'm going to be butchering these names. That's another thing I hate about niche, man. I can't say none of these damn fragrances. But anyway, Lue de Hiver, whatever, the freshest, cleanest, out the shower fragrance I've ever smelled. This is a good one. So if you want to hit a review on that one, let me know. Um, this one, I think was this was uh the names had rubbed off because it just came out. This is a Vetiver uh, Extraordinaire, another Frederick Mall one. This is a Frederick Mall one. This is a Variegate Concentrate. Then I went to the Tom Ford store, smelled everything in there, oud wood, Tuscan leather, tobacco vanilla. I don't have no samples. They wouldn't get out no samples, they just gave me this. Um, Tom Ford's Noir. So if you would like to hear a review on that, let me know. Uh, here goes another Frederick Mall of my boy Pierre Bourdon. Got this one, the review on that. So, oh, my boy Fragrance Guy, he sent me some samples back in the day. But I've been, I got so many samples and bottles of cologne I haven't tried on that I purchased yet. So I really couldn't get to these. I use a good, I use a good amount of them. Um, this is Veta Bertanka, and this is a uh, Ambre Nargile. So if you like to hear a review on those, let me know. Your pick. Um, that about sums it up. I just want this to be a quick review, and I'm already in thir 13 minutes. But um, anyway, guys, depending on what the ladies say, determines. Hey, hold up, hold up. I had a question for my subscribers or for you reviewers out there. I got about 30 new subscribers that don't have a page. So can somebody out there tell me how that's possible? Every time I get these new subscribers, to say something like, "Oh, this person has subscribed to you. They don't have a YouTube page." But they can um, monitor your activity. They'll know. They'll be alerted every time you upload a new video, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How is it possible to be a subscriber to me and you don't have a YouTube page? Somebody could tell me that. Please that in the comments. My second question is: I got a ton of damn contacts. You know, <laughs> it, you know, what is a contact? How, none of these people are my subscribers, but I got hundreds of contacts. So you guys could tell me the purpose of a contact or what a contact is. Um, let me know. Uh, but anyway. Depending on what the ladies say, in terms of what I spray. Peace.